Howdy y'all, it's Ryan from r and Music, your favorite mom and pop guitar shop and music lesson studio. <laughs> Deep in the heart of Canton, Texas, that's where I'm at right now today, and it is New Stuff Day. New unboxing day. I'm so excited, so excited we've got something to unbox. Let's get to it. Now, interestingly enough, there is no box. <laughs> so can you, can you do an unboxing when there's no box? Or is it just simply an uncasing? It's an uncasing video because I bought this guitar, but it did not come in a box. It came with a person who brought it in the store. And uh, I wanna show you guys what it is. So let's get started <laughs> with the uncasing video of Ryan's new guitar. Maybe you can guess from the case. Can you guess from the case what it is? Any ideas? <laughs> well, it is a Gibson USA guitar. Oh, so lovely. You may have already seen it in our vlog video, but here it is. Ah. It is a lovely Gibson Les Paul standard. So dang excited. I can't even, I can't even right now. <laughs> this is a lovely, beautiful 1996 Gibson that's Paul Standard in wine red. How magnificent is that? And it is in wonderful condition, excellent condition, I would say. Very, very, very minor scratches or, or buff marks or, you know, finish issues. Very, very, very minor. So it's in excellent condition. So excited. Now you might be thinking, Ryan, these didn't come with black pickup rings and a black pick guard. They came with cream pickup rings and a cream pick guard. And that would be true. And I actually have those right here, right now in the case. I've got, uh, I got them all bagged up. It is the cream pick guard and cream pickup covers. But the previous owner, I assume, uh, wanted to go with black. And so now we have these black pickup rings and black pickup covers. So I think I'm actually gonna leave it black for a while. I might, you know, go back and install the cream pickup rings and pick guard. But I really like the black and there's, there's a fantastic reason for that. So very nice, very nice on the back here. Let's go plug it in. Cause I know that's what you want. All right guys, so here we are. <laughs> I'll do a little bit of playing for you and uh, talk a little bit more about the guitar. It's really kind of unique. I've, I've always wanted a Les Paul, a Gibson Les Paul. Like I've owned uh, a couple of Epiphones before and we have an Epiphone Les Paul now that's Angela's and it's a really killer guitar actually. But I've always wanted a Gibson Les Paul because you know, my first guitar I bought with my own money was actually a Gibson Explorer that I still have. It's kind of my baby. Um, but I can never find, uh, you know, the right, the right one. You know, Les Pauls are kind of funny sometimes. You gotta find, you know, the right one um, in the right color and that feels right and is in the right condition and is at the right price, you know? And that's just never happened for me. You know, I've always wanted one, but I've never able to, never found the one, you know? And then 
this uh, lovely lady came in and brought this to me and she was trying to figure out what the value was for this particular guitar and like she had really no idea because she wasn't a guitar player it was her husband's guitar and um, sadly her husband had passed away in a, an accident and um, she had so, several of his guitars and she was you know going to sell them because she she's not a player you know and she didn't really know what to do with them but she was trying to not get taken advantage of <laughs> as uh, some stores will do and pawn shops tend to do and she told me what a, a pawn shop had offered her for this, and it was incredibly, uh, incredibly low price. I said, "No, you should, you shouldn't, you should not do that. That's a terrible idea. That guitar is worth a lot more than that." So I helped her figure it out. The serial number, found out it was a 1996, and I kind of went online and showed her, "Hey, these are some what some 96 Les Paul standards are selling for on Reverb and some other used places, and here's sort of the going price." Um, doesn't mean they actually sell for that price. You know, someone could list it for, you know, $19.99, but I could also go in and make them an offer for $16 or $1,700 or whatever. And, you know, so it doesn't, just because they're listed for that price doesn't mean they actually sell for that, but you can check out the price. But she didn't even know the year it was or uh, any of the details. So I helped her find that out, helped her look around. and. was incredibly interested because it was the color I wanted. I always wanted a Les Paul that would match my Gibson Explorer. As a, one of my dreams is to have <laughs> um, a, a Les Paul and a Flying V, preferably from the early 90s, um, that match my Explorer. So I have the kind of trifecta of <laughs> Gibson guitars, in my opinion. The V, the Explorer, and the Les Paul. And so I immediately, when I saw it, was like, hey, now, <laughs> you know, but I, you know, I just told her, hey, this is what they're going for. That is ridiculous. What the pawn shop's offering you, you could get more for it if you want to sell it online or all that. And she didn't necessarily want to go to the trouble of listing everything online and all that. And. She was a really nice lady. Uh, she chatted with Angela on the phone before ever coming up here, and, and Angela said, "No, no, no, don't don't go to a pawn shop. That's not, that's too cheap." You know, and we kind of, Angela and I kind of kind of threw out a number to her that I'm like, you know, this is what a store should probably pay you for it because they have to resell it. You know, obviously, if you're taking it to a store or someplace that's going to resell it, they have to buy it at a price they can resell it and make some money at it. But um, you know. But she came in and she kind of had to wait and watched while we were teaching lessons to some young guitar players. And so she was out there tapping her foot, kind of watching us teach, you know, which is, that's what we do here. We're keeping the music alive for the next generation. And then we had a long chat and talked to her and she says, well, you seem like you might be interested. I'm like, oh, I am. <laughs> I told her my, my first guitar I bought was a Gibson. It was a 91 and da da da. And so we just chatted and she says, well, let me know if you're interested. And she gave me her phone number and um, we kind of had to figure some things out and, you know, move some money around to make it possible. But, but we did and we figured out a way to make it work and uh, we ended up giving her what she felt like was a fair price and that we felt like was a good price for us, you know. And I think more than anything else, um, she was really happy that it was going to um, a really good home you know, uh, going to an owner that would really appreciate it and that I'm not just buying it to resell it, but we're literally, um, you know, we, we spend a lot of our time teaching young students guitar. <laughs>
This will be a guitar that I use in lessons and at student recitals and band practices and I've already used it on one little recording session with Paul the Bitter Bass Man <laughs> and uh, you know that it's someone who will truly appreciate you know the guitar and I think that meant a lot to her because you know um, I can't imagine losing your spouse um, and the fact of knowing that it was going Going to a good home, basically, I think really made her very, very, very happy. Yeah. And of course, we are extremely happy. I feel very honored. Um, her husband was a Vietnam veteran, and, uh, you know, a lot of people loved him. He was a good guy, apparently. His name is Myers. And so now I am the lucky caretaker of his guitar. And it will definitely be, it will definitely be loved and appreciated. Everything was so interesting the way it fell together. It's a 1996 model, you know, which is kind of, I wanted a mid, early to mid 90s model guitar. Angela graduated high school in 1996, so that was kind of weird. You know, it all just sort of came together. And I tell you what, when I played it, I was like, oh, feels great. The neck, it's uh, like a 60s, a 60s neck. So it was very familiar and comfortable to me. It feels a lot like my Explorer does. And of course it matches. The magic colors. Yeah, I'm very, very excited to own it now. And I'll be using it in videos, doing some c comparison videos for you guys, and uh, just be playing it a lot, I'm sure. And, uh, we'll do some playing. Okay, we're gonna do some quick playing here, in and out of the talking part of the video. I'm just using the Video Mic Pro on my camera, and we're playing through you know the Mesa dual rectifier. And uh, I'll hopefully do a full-on demo later where we actually mic up everything and do recording and guitar and bass and stuff. But just a quick and dirty unboxing video sound sample for you guys. <laughs> So thank you guys so much for watching this unboxing, uncasing video of the new Gibson <laughs> Les Paul that we have. And uh, yeah, you'll be seeing a lot of it in coming videos and pictures and such on our Instagram page. So be sure and go check out uh, the RNA Music Instagram and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And until then, keep the music alive. Music needs you. We need the music and we need to keep it alive for future guitar players and the next generation. <laughs> of guitarist. All right. Thank you guys so much. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. So excited.